Hey, it's Tim here. In Tableau 2021.1, Tableau added the ability for Tableau to support virtual warehouses in Snowflake. Now, at first I was initially confused because Snowflake call all their warehouses virtual warehouses. So I was sort of confused when I sort of read this message and I saw, well, what do they actually mean by this? So I had a little bit of a play around and I think I've managed to figure it out. So you can see here that beginning in 2021, Tableau automatically uses your default Snowflake virtual warehouse if none is specified. So let me show you this behavior first, then I'll show you how to find out which is your default virtual warehouse in Snowflake. Okay, so let's go ahead over to Tableau Online here and I'm just going to open up a, a basically a new workbook in the browser. So I'm going to go create a workbook and the first thing we're going to do is connect to a data source. Now, not many people know this, but actually the third option here is the connectors and there's a whole host of connectors. In 2020.1, they've actually added a few more connectors that you can connect to directly here from the browser. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just connect to Snowflake. And what I need to do is essentially get a few bits of uh, information. So let me get my Snowflake server URL. Let's just put that in there. Use a username and password. And for this, uh, I'm just going to probably select uh, this one, hit tab. That should take me to the uh, new window. So I can um, enter my password, uh, Tableau Tim TNMD. And in here, I just need to enter the password. I'm going to sort of probably skip this and blur it all out. But once you're signed in, you'll see that um, you get this successful notification. And the key thing here is this particular step. You can see here that select the warehouse is now optional. It wasn't required before. Okay. So what we can now do is go ahead, just skip that question. Just tell uh, Tableau which database we want to uh, what connect to. There's no warehouse selected. So let's just choose a Snowflake sample data set. And let's just go choose a, a reasonably small schema. I'm going to drag in a few things and I'm just going to drag in the orders and the customer key, create a simple relationship here between those two using the customer key, hit close, and then go straight to sheet one. And I'm going to do a very basic count of uh, records here for orders, 150 million rows uh, read in. So we're pretty much uh, done there. Now, you're probably wondering, well, I didn't specify the warehouse, so how do I find out which warehouse was actually used for that query? Well, if we head over to Snowflake, you'll see this is my list of databases. Uh, I'm actually going to go here to my uh, the role that I'd actually be using in this particular instance, in this particular setup. Uh, I'm only the only one here. So if I go to my history tab, uh, I can actually see all the queries that I've just done. And you can see here that it's used um, the small and it's used the default compute warehouse. Now you're probably wondering, well, why did it use that particular warehouse? Well, the key thing is essentially to do with the settings. So uh, let me just refresh that, make sure that is the most recent one. Yep, it definitely used the small warehouse. And if I just do uh, this, I can actually see that I queried all the um, orders. So if I actually uh, go into this and let's just uh, let's just open this query up, uh, you can see here that we do a simple count of orders there, and it's it's really sort of simple to see now. To find out which is your default uh, data set, what you need to do is essentially go to uh, an admin role. And essentially this role I'm on isn't actually senior enough to be able to see that. So if I go to account admin, uh, one thing I can then do is basically go to this account tab here and it gives me a lot more information about what's going on. Okay. And what I can do is essentially go to users and I can see myself here as Tableau Tim TNMD and you can see my default warehouse is the compute warehouse. So this is how you find out what your default warehouse is. Essentially when a user logs in, uh, it's going to use their default warehouse. Now that's not the only reason that Snowflake will use to compute a default warehouse. There's actually this really nice guide here that gives a criteria in which it's going to work through. And so you can see here that the first one here, overridden um, this particular one, default warehouse for the user, is the first thing it checks. It's then overridden by another default if it's specified for the particular client. Let's say I'm using Snow SQL, JDBC, whatever. That then overrides the previous one. And then that is again overridden by the default warehouse specified on the client command line or through the driver connector parameters used to Snowflake. So essentially, if I specifically specify one, that's what it will use instead. So if in Tableau I'd selected a warehouse, this uh, particular 
um, uh, uh, option here, number three, would have actually been the one that would choose my warehouse. So that's how the default warehouse is uh, decided uh, by Snowflake and Tableau in conjunction with each other. So uh, that's a nice uh, sort of small quality of life improvement. If you use Snowflake a lot, you no longer need to be picking things. As long as you've got your defaults uh, intelligently set up, it's not going to go crazy. Now, the reason you'd want to choose your warehouse is let's say I'm working on a really big workbook and I know that my default warehouse is not really sort of geared up for the challenge. What I can then do is come here and choose my more powerful warehouse because that's actually going to uh, give me more computer and more resources for the uh, you know response for the server to be nice and zippy when I'm querying a database. So that's pretty much it for this video. There's not much more to that. I was just sort of curious how that sort of dynamic work and I managed to figure it out. So I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out some of the other videos on this playlist about 2020.1 features and I'll catch you in the next video.